Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we're going to have fun tonight. Let me first say we thank and praise God that we've all made it here safely today. I pray to God that your return and my return will be equally as safe. Let us quiet our spirit. And say thanks to the ancestors see when we talk about ancestors we seem to think we're talking about the folks that society said did something but we talk about the winos because you see you don't know if I'm a true wino because I'm just a little rascal, I did a white racist system. So y'all be playing games. White folk got y'all acting like uh, uh, it's something wrong with you if you blame anything that's wrong with you on them. I blame everything on them. <laughs> huh? That's right. Now, I know white folk didn't do it all, but most of it. I woke up this morning with a hemorrhoid. I said, white folk did it. <laughs> It keeps saying, oh, we got to stop playing the victim. Well, well tell the Christian church, for 2,000 years you've been telling me what they did to Jesus. Huh? 2,000 years, every Easter you tell me what they did to Jesus. But then you're going to tell me when I tell you what a white racist system did to me. And I just hope I will be Obama peace. Oh, this is oh, going to be fun. Ooh. Oh, uh, if that brother fixed this economy, they will call him Black Magic. <laughs> if he don't fix the economy, get that nigga out the White House, huh? Oh, yeah, that's right. The boy, I, you know, I, I really want to believe the boy smart. No, no. To let somebody give you a whole raggedy, broke down, evil, hateful, ungodly, unspiritual system like this, you've got to be a fool. You hear me? I mean, please. If I, if he called me and asked me, what must he do? I said, ask for a recount. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I want to find somebody that don't work, because you're working, folks. Y'all miss most of it. They'd be, be running all kinds of stuff on TV while y'all be at work. Have y'all seen them white men on TV that you ain't never seen before? With that scary look on their face? Huh? Did y'all see them dogging out the chairman of General Motors? Huh? Now, now I, I kind of feel sorry for the Congress folks and Maxine Waters and them, because they're still white boys. Yep, if you make them mad, your car will never start. Hmm? Hmm? Somewhere. What a... And y'all got to see, you have to, if we get nothing out of this, just try to listen to your, <coughs> your third, third, third consciousness. And then try to go back to, there is a God, I don't know what they call it, uh, you know. I thought it was called God till they start calling the mafia God Father. And I said, I'm gonna be part of that. Must be another name. You know what I'm saying? Can you be in a in a, in a Christian society? They call the mafia slimy thug, ungodly God Godfather. Nobody say nothing. Hmm? You know what I'm saying? Stand up. I'm gonna show you something. So she hold one finger up in the air. Now, in the beginning, there was one person, right? Name what? God. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm, 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 I'm talking about Adam. 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 Right? And then Adam said to God, I am what? 
And that's where they got it. He should have said right there, how can you be lonely, boy, when ain't nobody here but you? <laughs> now, after that, now, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying? Once you let me get by with that, yeah. there's nobody on the planet but you. How can you be lonely? You know what I'm saying? Okay, so, okay, let, let's buy into it just for fun. Okay, so he sent him a woman. Name what? Eve. Eve. Huh? Now, how many people on the planet? Two, right? And they had two children, Cain and what? All right. How many of you got? Come on, come on. Oh, did, did you go to special school or something? <laughs> I mean, did a bus come out of your house and pick you up while all the other children was walking? <laughs> so now you got four. Yeah. That's what you get for sitting on the front. Did everybody tell you to come down? Oh, you got four now, right? And one son did what to the other one? So now you got three. Now follow this now. Follow this. There's three people. And then said, he went out and begot him a what? Ain't nobody there but mom. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Now you see where MF, MF come from? And they won't make us think that. No, that was you. Ain't but three people. The boy, mom, and dad. And he go get him a wife. He can snatch Pop's thing. What? Huh? The boy clever, he didn't just get like that. Hmm? He said, I'm going to kill your Jesus on Friday, and you're going to call it a good day, and eat my say, good Friday. Hmm? That's what we got to start unwinding. And you don't have to debate with nobody. Hmm? The day you was born, all the writings on the planet, just one thing, wisdom. Wisdom, that's all. I don't care if you read the Muslim book, the Hindu book, the, the, the Chinese book, it talks about, and they had great wisdom. Then this white boy came, huh, and created intelligence and smart. Huh? Huh? So he can grade it and create the test. Huh? I have wisdom. I know how to, I know when I want to pee. That's why I wasn't there when they called me. Huh? I didn't have to take no test. Huh? I didn't have to register when I got to town. Wisdom would tell you when you have to pee. Huh? You hear me? We born knowing that. But they're going to say, you dumb if you can't do this here, and you smart if you can, but... I know when to be. I thought I know when to be. Huh? You got five PhDs, I haven't finished grade school, but I know when to be. It's a game. Great wisdom. And if this boy could great wisdom, he'd build a pyramid. Huh? This is a game. And all we got to do is stop worrying about dinner and, and I'm going to get me something to eat. Oh, something out there smells good. Mm. You know what I'm saying? This is, and I hope, whew, you know there's somebody on another planet. You know all these white folks ain't lying. They keep saying, I saw, I saw, it landed. I said, why you shoot it? I said, I did, but it kept coming. <laughs> you see, this white boy don't know what to do if he can't shoot it. That's why he can't get this economy straight, because he can't shoot it. <laughs> hmm? 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 You know what I'm saying? Forget about racism and prejudice and segregation. It's about white supremacy. And most white folks don't understand that. Huh? Huh? It's about white supremacy. That's what got Bill Cosby in trouble. Huh? Yeah, I know Bill. The, the guy who wrote stuff, I taught Ed Weinberg how to write. 
I mean, you see, you see the Bill Cosby created by everyone, but that, I, look, I got that little punk when he didn't even know how to write. <laughs> and you youngsters, you see the comedians and all that? No. Work to be writers. If, if Bill Cosby made a billion, which he had, Ed Weinberg has made 20. Huh? The money is in writing. Huh? You hear me? And so when you stop and, and think about Bill Cosby, I'm going to show you white supremacy. Bill Cosby said, you know who owns the NBC? General Electric. Huh? General Electric. So Bill Cosby said NBC was for sale. Bill Cosby said, I want to buy NBC. He said, what that nigga say? <laughs> See, when you understand white supremacy, huh? Certain things that you can't have. Huh? Now think about what they did to Bill. Bill was a good brother. I mean, white folks loved him. They had their children all up on his Nick eating tapioca out his ears. <laughs> Remember? And he was just as silly there. I hope you good. I hope you good. I hope you huh? And he even said he's America's dad, huh? Until he said he wanted to buy NBC. They killed his son. Wait a minute. How do you kill my son? And I can't get no more Jello commercials. Hmm? See what wisdom will do? Hmm? No, don't do that. Don't frown. Just, just take it. Take it in. You know what I mean? That's why you women can't check. Can't, you can't catch child molesters. You're too emotional. You see? See, like I'm your brother, right? And and and. And you have three daughters, and I'm fooling with one of them, six years old, you know what I mean? And your daughter come and tell you that I'm touching her, what happens to your face? And then she thinks she did something wrong, and you can never catch me. Hmm? Hmm? Y'all got to get rid of all that old emotion. She's looking at you. Huh? And she thinks so. she look at you. What you need to do is leave the room and go somewhere and holler and scream and, and then come back and don't deal with it today. You're more than a mother. You got to be a cop. You got to be a teacher. You got to be a lawyer. You got to be, you hear me? And the reason the white boy ain't worried about y'all, y'all too emotional. Huh? Act like you did something wrong. Want to be, you know. If Obama called me tonight and said, what's the first thing he should do when he get in the White House? I say, Dig up that rose garden and plant a watermelon patch. <laughs> Somewhere. Somewhere, hey, think about it. Somewhere, wisdom. Bill Cosby's son had a flat tire. You remember that? Right. Uh... Now, back in the old days, during the cowboy days, me and you'd be out there and catch a stagecoach coming by and rob them. But we're on the highway waiting on a car. We still have to death waiting on a car to break down on the highway. Huh? So that don't even make sense. A car, we robbing cars. You skyjack a car at the filming station at the corner, not on the highway, huh? And so he calls this white woman. And she grew up in a miniskirt. Y'all remember the story? Huh? High heel shoes and a mink coat. To help a brother change the time. And that Mercedes that he had is one of the top of the line. Most folks never heard of it. You get a flash, you punch a button, the child changes itself. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, it wasn't a robbery, remember? He had $6,000 cash, huh? All his credit cards, cell phone. Then they arrest this Russian immigrant 
nine months later and say he robbed him. Hmm? Then we checked the Russian now. He was in Mexico City that night. But this is how they do. Huh? They just run all kind of game down and, 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 and you listening to their mechanism. Hmm? How many of y'all know that they say I had the worst form of cancer you could have? Anybody remember that? Huh? And you know what I did to I asked him, how you know? You know, how you know? He said, I, I, uh, 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 uh. He, they don't know when you challenge him. Hmm? Then he come up with all this, and then I, then I dogged him. I said, I've been waiting for you all my life. He said, what do you mean? I said, I know who you are. I ain't gonna tell nobody. He said, well, I'm Dr. So-and-so. You had all these degrees. I said, I know you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, the white boy went off. <laughs> I'm not Jesus. I'm not going to tell. <laughs> I know you, Jesus. <laughs> Heal me. <laughs> you ever talk to television? How many of y'all know they hear everything you say and they see everything in your house? How many of y'all know that? That's right, so just talk back to it. Uh, talk back to it. You know? You, you go, you, you, you fly on airplanes? Now, if, if you and I were terrorists, and we're gonna hook up something on the plane, now you know we're not gonna get on the plane with the bomb, right? So you have a piece, and I'll have a piece, right? So we on the plane, where's the best place to assemble it? In the bathroom, right? So you think, you think when you get on the plane and go to the bathroom, cameras ain't there looking at you? Hmm? So when I go, I... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do you believe a nation that spends trillions of dollars for defense can let some little Arab 19-year-old punks that ain't never been to college come here and bring us to a meal? Are you really that stupid? Huh? See, that's what happened when I switched it from wisdom hmm, to intelligence. Hmm? You know what I'm saying? You saw that plane hit that building, didn't you? You also saw him land on the moon, didn't you? And you saw that flag blowing? There is no air on the moon. <laughs> How many of y'all know that? There's no air. The flag can't blow. Huh? You know what I'm saying? You saw that white ball with Armstrong when he hit that dust and that, that dust flew up and came back down? There's no gravity on the moon. If it go up, it'll keep going. Huh? You understand? You saw the shadows on the moon? The moon is a black planet. When you look up there, that's not that's the reflection from the sun. Huh? That's what you're looking at. So the boy been tricking. And so when you stop and think about, you know, and then you got to ask questions. Huh? I used to be scared to ask my mother questions because she was, she was a, oh, just kind of, but she was one of them ignorant Christians. Because <laughs> I, I believed, I, I, I did everything my mama told me to do. I'm looking, I'm reading the Bible, and, and it says here uh, that Christ came down to die for my sins. I can handle that. And then when I get to the next one, I see where it says, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? That sounds like somebody trying to get away, don't it? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I didn't write that. You understand what I'm saying? So, 
if, if my mother was here, you, you cannot find a more beautiful, kind, sweet person than my mother. If she could come back to life and she was here now, she's so kind, she'd make Martin Luther King look like a hoodoo. But if you told my mother Jesus Christ wasn't a Christian, she would stomp you to death. <laughs> well, my mother was so ignorant, she didn't know Christianity never started until 100 years after he was dead. And they never wrote one thing about Jesus until 100 years after. She didn't even know his brother James was killed the same way he was. And that's who raised me. Hmm? It's a game. And if you just use the wisdom, the wisdom, the wisdom. If I ask you for a dollar, I know you'd give it to me, right? Girlfriend, you didn't hear what I said about the white folks. I was just playing. I, you know, I was just, you know, I just, uh, you know. You know. Well, I know you're going to send one, my wife. So, Miss Lady, I just asked him for a dollar. So we got a white witness. So, no, don't pull it out. Just you didn't pull it out before she got here. Now you want all in your pocket. Now I asked you for a dollar twenty minutes ago. Now you going yeah, I give it. Can't let her see it. But here's what I'm saying. I asked you for a dollar, and you have a dollar to give me. Now, if I keep asking you for a dollar. Hmm, then there's something wrong with me. I know you got a dollar, and I know if I ask you for it, you're going to give it to me, right? So if you pray to God who has the power to heal your child, one time, and every time you pray more than once, you say, I don't believe it. You never ask for nothing but one time, and after that, you end the move of thanksgiving. Thank you. Now, I can stand here all night and say, thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. But I can't ask again. Huh? It's a game. Hmm? So when they told me, I canceled my son that went to Oregon State. And I said, man, we need somebody in the family that knows something about the body. So he went to become a chiropractor, right? So I've had these hernias, man. I got rid of them now, but I had them. And, and, and he was checking them out. He said, uh, the x-ray machine don't work. See, there is no such thing as negativity with the universe. Huh? You walk out here tonight and your car is gone or flat. That's the universe saying, I want to get you off this accident that's waiting for you down there. Hmm? Huh? You know how I'm on planes every day. You know how out of the grace of God you got to be to get on a plane that's going to wreck. I woke up this morning, I could have fell out of bed and broke my leg, huh? I could have been hit by a cab. You know what I'm saying? There's 10,000 things could happen to me on the way to the airport to get me off this wreck. Huh? So, he take this, don't work. He said, well, let me, uh, let me give you an MRI. It don't cost nothing. So give me MRI, and that's what he's looking here for the hernias. Huh? Two weeks later, the people who make the machine and service the hospital come to understand you had a celebrity in here. Can we see your pictures? Hmm? So they're looking at the whole picture, and they see the cancer. And they call my son. Dad, Dad, you have to get over here quick. What's wrong, son? So I go over to Dad, and I say, son, look, when I walked in here two weeks ago, I just walked 10 miles that morning. So whatever it is, it hadn't been there long. Huh? <laughs> so send it to John Hopkins. They got all kind of machines over here. They got some dirty machines, too. <laughs> That's why y'all in Baltimore are so sick. They do stuff here that Hitler would have been ashamed of. Mm -hmm. Black men in Baltimore has the highest form of drug addiction. This little bitty old pissy ass town. 
And y'all got more drug addiction than New York and Chicago. Come on, man, what they doing down there? Huh? You know what I'm saying? When I come to Baltimore, I look, every time I take three steps, I look around. <laughs> I went back there to the toilet just now and flushed the chain and flushed up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Earlier I went in there and I went into the toilet and walked to the latrine and zipped my pants now and said, nigga, you don't need to pee. <laughs> and so my friend said, we use everything we have here. We don't know what this is. Hmm? So you don't panic. Huh? Someone said to Dad, what are we going to do? I said, change my name and send it to the Armed Force Institute of Pathology. No, they know. Huh? Because if they put my name on it, they said, oh, we just misread it. It wasn't nothing wrong. I said, Jesus, this is not only cancer, it's the worst, it's a type of cancer you get working in a nuclear plant. Now, when is the last time I've been in a nuclear plant? <laughs> and who owns nuclear plants? And if I've never been in a nuclear plant and the government owns nuclear plant, it's obvious the nuclear plant came to me. Hmm? So I said to my son, I said, Christian, don't show this to your mother until after your sister get mad, because no lady can be alone, you know. So after the wedding was over, I showed her the report, right? <laughs> and she hit, she looked at it, she said, how can they do this to you? I said, but y'all are fucking emotions. I said, baby, if you think I'm leaving this booty back here for your high school sweetheart, you are out of your mind. I ain't going nowhere. So you wipe your eyes and get on out of here and come back with that smile on your face like you know I ain't going nowhere. You know, you run out of here with that box like you're looking at the insurance policy. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Hmm? And you come on back in here with another, another, you know, oh, I'm packing up my stuff and getting out of here. But she's a little frank, you know, born with a little taste of money. Ain't no black folk rich. That's, that's a myth. Hmm? Nice education. I met at the University of Chicago. She thought I was a professor there. You know, and white folks, you know, way back there when we were I was looking for me a bike to steal. <laughs> and she passed by. And she says, you, you teach here? I said, y'all. Yeah. That's how we hooked up, man. Huh? You know what I'm saying? So I, I tried to explain to her, you know, about emotions. Biggest problem we had when we first got married, she couldn't handle debt. She had been used to it. Huh? When are we going to pay Sears and Roebuck? If you act like we got some money, we don't have no money. And when I get some money, Sears and Roebuck is not my first priority. <laughs> what do you mean by that? They knew I wasn't going to pay for this stuff when I got it. Uh, on the back of the application, they said, who's going to pay for this? I said, your mama. <laughs> I walked in the house two weeks later. I thought Mo they had a nervous breakdown. She said, they did it, baby. They did it. They did it. I said, what's wrong? Here's a letter from, from Sears and Roebuck. Final notice. Final. Let me see it, baby. Final notice. Uh, thank God we won't be hearing from them no more. <laughs> Oh, silly brother called me. Used to be rich. Worked for Enron. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> he called me the other day. Things is bad. They're about to repossess my car. What must I do? Don't park in front of the house. <laughs> Y'all be so worried. Come on. Mess up your credit score. Huh? 
And I know black folks ain't got no money. Ain't got no credit. Worried about their credit score. Huh? Mine's so messed up. Do you know what your credit score is? 800? 700? 600? Oh, you need a cosigner. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You, you would need a co-shine at the dollar shop, yeah? Yes. I know you're fine, but I mean, you can't get nothing. I get anything I want. How do I do it? Mine is a negative 3,000. And then white folks think they machines are messed up. And they say, oh, Mr. Gregory, we're so sorry. Something must have happened. Let's go through the store and get anything you want. We'll, we'll, we'll work this out tomorrow. I'll buy stuff for black folks I don't even like. You see me? <laughs> Serious. You know what I'm saying? Don't let nothing. Huh? Here's what I told my wife one time. My wife never drove a car, never had a drink, never had a taste. A drink is one thing. You ever had a taste? That taste is something else. A drink, a drink is just no Christian drink, but a taste. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you, you know what I mean? Your first one, you know, things come over, ugly people start looking pretty to you. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? You'd be smiling and just get night, won't speak to everybody, you know. That's what happened to my lady, man. I took her up to, to the Rich Carlton in Boston. And you, you've been in the rest where they bring you a, a wine list, look like a dictionary. So I said, uh, Rock Child, 1948. Any y'all know, y'all know anything about wine in here, y'all? Anybody? Richard. Oh, Richard, yeah, 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 that's good. Yeah, that, that gets to you quick. Yeah. I'm talking about the, that expensive stuff. You can't, you can't do your mortgage and, you know what I mean? But Thunderbird, too, man, Thunderbird. <laughs> Sometimes Thunderbird make boys look like women, though. So be very careful with that Thunderbird, yeah. yeah. So don't be looking, I'm not talking, I'm talking to him. I haven't finished what you get. So my old lady, she, uh, she said, why are them white folks looking at us? I said, the wine, the wine. So I don't know nothing about wine. I just, you know, I just know the price. And so, I said, well, this is a bottle of Rock Town 1948. He said, why did I look at it? $6,700. That was 30 years ago. 35, huh? That's why they're looking. They'd have looked even harder if they knew I wasn't going to pay for it. <laughs> uh, so, my old lady, this bad Kool Aid, she didn't, they, you know, you know the, the, the good wine, that, that wine, you're talking about sweet, man. The good wine, man, is dry. So I put a little sugar in it, made it like, and she just, she get down, and first time she ever drank, get down, can we get another bottle? Yeah, we get another bottle. Now the police come up. <laughs> How you doing, Greg? Mm. <laughs> so now we home, on the way home, and that's when that giddiness came over. Greg, let's make a deal. If I die for you or you die for me, we ain't going to see nobody else. I said, you better try to get that arrangement while we're alive. <laughs> Serious? <laughs> I'm planning on bringing somebody to the funeral. <laughs> I mean, do you understand? Death is over. <laughs> She's talking about respect the dead. If you ever learn to respect the living, the dead might not die. Hmm? Hmm? Games. I've been married 50 years and love ain't got nothing to do with it. My old lady told me when we first got in, you ever leave me, I will hurt you. Sister, hurt will keep a brother home for a long time. <laughs> and then when you make big money, there's another word that'll keep you home that Michael Jordan just found out about called half. <laughs> in 50 years, and love ain't got nothing to do with it. I love you, baby. If I can't have you, ain't nobody gonna have you. There's something wrong with that, right? That's love. Once you learn to be lovable, mm -hmm. then I'm safe with you and you're safe with me. Mm -hmm. Just that simple. Just that simple. 
And black men, we, if we ever wake up, the strongest two forces in the history of America has always been the black woman and the black church. Hmm? Hmm? The black woman in the black church. Hmm? I, uh, I really went outside. I was looking for Jesse Jackson. I heard he's going to be around here. And after he told Obama he's going to cut his nuts out, I keep me some nuts in case I bump into Jesse. <laughs> I just give him the nuts, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, they look, look at him, baby. See what they say? Look here. See what, what they say? Extra what? Extra large nuts, huh? <laughs> Boy, he'd be hell the night on the way home, right? <laughs> when you use wisdom, when Jesse said, y'all saw it, eh? Yeah. Cut his nuts out. Mm -hmm. Black men don't say nuts. They say balls. Huh? Something wrong with that? Hmm? Have you got some kind of machine that you can make stuff come out my mouth that I didn't see? Yeah, they do. You hear me? You hear me? Black men don't say nuts. And, and, and speaking of nuts, that's when you know how smart wise God is. I was thinking one day, if God came to me and said, Richard, see, God would never call you dick. If God call you dick, that's serious. Mm. So Richard, I have just made a man. And I put it all together except one. I've got his nuts here. Balls, God. Not nut balls. <laughs> And I know you got a brilliant mind, and I just want you to put them where you think they should be. Now, I never would have dawned on me where to put them. I never would have put them there. You know what I mean? Look, look, see, if I was sitting in one of them bar stools, and I jumped up, boom, and come down, where'd they go? You know, nobody, you never heard nobody say, I'll kick you in your nuts. Where'd they go? Huh? People commit all types of suicide, never in the nuts. Men freeze, they go to the Alps, and white boys go up there climbing and freeze to death. Nuts still intact. Hmm? You know what I'm saying? So all you have to do is just... I remember a white friend of mine, on my ninth child, and they said, well, isn't that a wonderful experience to go to the hospital when they're born? I said, I never went. What do you mean? That's what I said, I never went to the hospital. You have any children? Yeah. Did you did you go to the hospital? Yeah, I did. Did he look? Did I look? No, he didn't look. Well, you don't know how lucky you are, man. See, when I I said I was in the old lady so cool, she said, "Don't come." I said, if "White folks go. I'm gonna go." So I should have known something was wrong when the University of Chicago told me I had to go to birthing classes, and I didn't go to no classes to make that baby. So I went along with it. Now, she can tell you, if you didn't see, until you're young girls, whenever you get ready to have a baby, don't put the more curls in your head and none of that makeup, because all that come out. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm saying? That makeup just melts down, them little curls just fall out, and it's you and God. Hmm? And I'm sitting there, let me tell you what you miss, man. I'm there. She said, Greg, I think it's coming. And I got back, and that thing opened up, looked like Kansas City so big. <laughs> and the first thing I do, I'm thinking about that big black hole that I might get sucked up in, so I... And she gets scared. She think I saw the baby, and the baby might be deformed. She said, Greg, it's a baby. I ain't seen no baby. <laughs> Greg, tell me the truth. I said, I ain't seen no baby. <laughs> said, what did you see? You don't want to know. It was awful. I thought something had happened. You know, sometimes women go and say, I didn't know I thought something had happened. I said, baby, how you feel? She said, I'm on you. Tell me the truth. You know you don't feel that thing. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? 
Two days later, when that thing snapped back tighter than an E key on a banjo, I said, yes, there is a God. Only God, huh? Boom! I remember a Baptist minister came up to me and said, Brother, you're really spiritual. I heard you on TV. Will you come to my church Sunday and explain to my congregation how you found God? I said, you do not want to know this story. <laughs> the black woman in the black church. You can laugh at the black church if you want. Hmm? Black preachers, they can be fat, you know, always eating. Most of them didn't go to college, they were just called. You can't be a nun or a priest without graduating from college. Hmm? Hmm? My biggest mystery about the Catholic Church, I ain't never seen a fat nun or a fat priest. Only the Pope be fat. Hmm? You ever seen a fat man or a fat priest? All of them been to college. They all speak good English. My preacher ain't never been nowhere. It's hooping and howling and sweating. And, and you look at my preacher sweating and howling and screaming and talking in tongues and look at that priest and nun over there looks so immaculate. But my priest never ripped off a little boy's booty in the Catholic priest's hat. Huh? 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 That's why you can't judge nothing. Huh? And them Catholics can pray. Oh, they can pray. They be ripping off them little boys, and you notice they didn't report it till they was real old. Huh? That's prayer. Priest ripping off that little boy and say, God, I know what I'm doing ain't right. I'm not asking you to forgive me. Just six or so he won't remember till he get real old. And it worked. The guy, 90 years old, walking down the street with his wife and say, ah! She said, what's wrong? Father O'Malley ripped me off when? In 1904. <laughs> I mean, when Hollywood came up, out of all the music black folks, the genius we create, Hollywood saw fit to find one song to deserve a Academy Award. It's hard out here being a pimp. Hmm. So I wrote my song and sent it to the Vatican, to the Pope. It says, it's hard out here being a pedophile priest. <laughs> Especially since the altar board and called the police. Now you're going to jail where the brothers don't use no grease. <laughs> And so I'm 76, and if I could just be young once, I ain't never want to be. I thought old black men were so cool, you know. But I, I would like to be back in, in high school. Every time you pick up the paper, you read with teachers and have sex with the students. <laughs> if I had teachers like that when I was in school, I would have had a perfect attendance record. <laughs> I just see my mama now, boy. Well, where are you going out of here on Christmas morning with them books? I'm going to school, mama. Why are you going to school on Christmas day? Oh, I'm getting a little behind in my class. Can <laughs> <laughs> you show you how messed up the planet is? When I was in school, everybody knew what man teaches was having sex with the, the girls. And none of them went to jail. Now, every time they catch a woman, she go to jail. Ain't something wrong with that? Hmm? The games, the games, the games. So, if we ever find out who you all are, hmm? you're the mother of the earth. Huh? You are. In between that combination, the black woman and black, Jesse Jackson, he don't know who his dad is. Huh? Mama, no education. And Jesse got one of the fine minds, one of the most respected people on the planet. What's the combination? Black woman, black church. Hmm? Hmm? Black dude that's uh, 
governor of Massachusetts, Devon Patrick. He was born in Chicago, Robert Taylor Home, housing project, home welfare. Lived in the house with his two other brothers and sisters and, and his mother and grandmother. They had one bunk bed, three children. Every third day, one step on the floor. Huh? He ends up going to Harvard Law School, was so brilliant, Exxon Mobil, one of the major companies in the world, brought him in and put him over the legal department. Not in it, over it. And then Clinton, huh? Made him U.S. Attorney in Massachusetts, all white state, and now he's governor of all white state. What's the combination? Black woman, black church. Y'all play with the church if you want to. Church and God, two different things. Huh? But like I said, when I found out I had cancer, I had a serious prayer with God. See, I don't play with God. I just, I talk to God the same way I talk to you and ask you for that dollar. Huh? I had to go wash my hands and clean up and all that kind of stuff. Then go, because yeah, them is pimp prayers. Oh, God, I love the, oh, God, you know, I don't, you know, you, you heard my mama talk all that stuff. She did. It didn't work for her. So when I found out cancer on this farm, I just go out and say, hey, champ, you know, they got me. <laughs> and the guy, you know, there's a lot of niggas that deserve cancer, but I am not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're busy. I know you got a whole universe to give, and every now and then something sips through the crack. But if you want me to give you 12 black folks' names, and if you want something close to the house, I can handle that too. <laughs> See? And then after that, I talk to cancer. This is my body. Cancer, I'm giving you 72 hours to get out of here. Huh? That's all. This is my body. Huh? Some of y'all talk nasty and mean to your children and you talk to a germ or a disease. Huh? 72 hours, that's all. So I get a call from a friend of mine, he started crying. Steve Jaffer's father invented nuclear medicine, Cedar Sinai, one of the most expensive hospitals in the world. His father's retired now. Richard Jaffer, he said, I showed him your report, and he just cried. He said, that's less than three months. So he said, why don't you come on out? We'll be good for that one out, you know. They gave me all these tests, right? And you see, when you walk in like you're wealthy, you don't have to pay up front. You don't walk in all sad. Oh, Lord. I just walked in and see the sign on there. Nobody ever did miss my phone. I just walked in. Hey, where's Steve? Where's, where's Brother Steve? What's, what's going on? Hey, how are you doing? And your wife will love to do that. <laughs> so they give me all these tests. Nuclear. Hmm? The bill came to my house, $1.5 million. You know white folks don't pay for that. Hmm? My wife says, how are you going to pay for that? I said, I'm not. Let them repossess it. Before it was 72 hours up, a white dude called me. Say, Dick, I heard on the radio, you have the, it's the worst type of cancer you can have. Say, there's some water in El Salvador that I can take you up there and you get five injections and it's over. Hey, according to what the doctor was telling me, he said, we have to take out two of your ribs. I said, Doc, when you said ribs, I wasn't talking about the barbecue hut. I wasn't even thinking about you. I went up there and got five injections, huh? Went back to see the Sinai in one of the most brilliant minds in the world, huh? Keith Black, neurologist, brother, come from all over the world. He started crying. He said, I don't know where you've been, but we need to close this hospital down and follow you. That's all you have to do, stop worrying, huh? You know what I'm saying? You don't know each other. If you die, don't let them know it. Just hide someplace. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
You know what I'm saying? Because once you die, mama, all the family come, niggas, you ain't even see you gonna come to the funeral. Don't even give them that privilege. Just go somewhere and just hide. You know, just, you know what I'm saying? Somewhere. And learn how smart these sisters are. Huh? Boy, let me tell you. I didn't know how smart my wife was. Too. Kobe Bryant, remember that white woman accused him of raping her? He went and bought his wife a $4 million diamond. Did y'all see that? Let me tell you, if a white woman tonight accused me of raping her and I go buy Lil a $4 million diamond ring, she'll go get two more white women. Because <laughs> mm. she know where that ring came from. There's a matching necklace and bracelet. You know what I'm saying? And this whole thing, this whole, the whole planet in chains. It's been a mind shift, huh? A paradigm shift, huh? And if y'all can be back in that old stuff if you want, that don't mean nothing. And, and, and you stop lying to these children. You be lying to them, don't even know you lying to them. That's why I don't hang out with no old folks. You know, I don't even. Some old folks the other day tell me, I sure wish we could get back to the good old days. Well, look like they're coming back. <laughs> You hear him talk about that depression and look like they're coming back. <laughs> I'm 76 years old. The only thing good about the good old days was they left. <laughs> we were so poor and hungry and raggedy when I was a child. The best day, best day we had in the house was Halloween. That's the day you could wear your natural clothes. And everybody thought you was dressed for the occasion. Oh, look at Richard. Got on shoes, look just like feet. And they got y'all stupid enough to believe that young children today is dumber today than we were. And you fall for that crap. Huh? You fall for that crap. My six, five-year-old grandson, huh? Just had another little brother. My son, his wife, and two midwives at home. Five years old, he's in the room with him. When the head came out, he touched it. Tell me about this. Huh? Yes. You know what? That boy will always have respect for life and women. We don't see what you go through. Huh? We just rip off a piece of booty and out of that comes up. Well, we don't feel your pain. He saw it. Huh? He understands life. Huh? That's where they're coming from. Huh? And these white children, they out the box. Have you ever bit your tongue? You know how bad that hurt? They stick their tongue out and run five screws to it, and they're not taking pain killer. And any time you start inflicting pain on yourself, that's God saying to the older folks, you next. Right now, I got so much respect for your ignorant ass, I can't hit you, so I beat up myself. But one day, that'll stop, and it's just about ready to stop, huh? Hmm? That's what this is about. Hmm? When I was a little boy, if you saw a tattoo, you was in the presence of a felon. Huh? My oldest daughter got two PhDs from the London School of Economics. Me and my old lady flew over there, and you got these white girls getting their third and fourth doctor's degree. Some of them got their hair shaved slick. Some got their hair dyed blue, purple, purple, orange, green. Huh? My wife said, what do you think that's about? And tattoos up to their eyeballs. Mm -hmm. In 1933, when the Japanese invaded China, that's why the Chinese hate the Japanese, that bad blood. And when they went over that border, they didn't go to kill the Chinese leader they say, find every young man with a tattoo and blow their brains out because tattoo represents revolution. And that's what you see when you go downtown to the best place you can go and see these white folks walking around with all them tattoos all over them. And when they get them, they don't take painkiller. Huh? So y'all sit here and don't be ready. <laughs> you see that fire coming. Huh? But see, white folks are different from us. They had big 300 years of white privilege. huh? You know what I'm saying? 
last Christmas. Biggest news in the whole world. Remember the dudes went out there to the, to the, to the, to the zoo in San Francisco? Huh? Remember that? And that tiger jumped over there? I wasn't worried about that. I'm just thinking about how messed up your life has to be. You must didn't get nothing for Christmas to go to the zoo. <laughs> I mean, you didn't have nothing under the tree. But I found out something about tigers and them animals. Did y'all see that boy through that, that bottle at one of them? And when he leaped over, there was 20 people. He went right to the one that threw the bottle and killed him. Hmm? No, it, it's different. White folks and black folks. Big difference. White folks be on TV. Talking about Cialis. You ever see those commercials? Little children see them too. Comes in your living room. Huh? Tell you about try Cialis. And if you get a four hour erection, go to the emergency room. Hey, where I come from, a four hour erection is a treat. <laughs> hmm? You run down and tip the pharmacist. Huh? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I come home one day, my little six year old grandson. Say, so your granddad, what's an erection? He saw it on TV. I said, go ask your grandmother. <laughs> she came back with a little smile on her face. I said, what did she tell you? She said, she'll tell me later, but meanwhile, I'll tell you, she hasn't seen one of them things around the house in about five years. <laughs> Don't mess with the sister, right? Uh, please, please. Brother Obama, Lord, Lord, brother. When you get home, this Thanksgiving, bring all the family around and look at one another. And you see Obama, who's just like you. Do you really know what happened with it? Forget about him being president. Huh? They're going to cut him a new booty hole. Forget that. We've already won. Huh? Think about it. Never again can we say to the little child, one day you might can be president. That's wiped out. Huh? Wiped out. Huh? Gone. With no guns. Gone. And the people who suffered the most, the biggest loss wasn't the Republican, was Negro athletes and Negro entertainers because white folks don't have to act like they're the greatest thing in the history of the planet. Huh? You can't look like O.J. Simpson. Huh? Huh? You can't look like Muhammad Ali. Because you look like Obama because your qualification is not getting out on the track outrunning God or getting on the basketball field and out shooting Jesus or getting on a football field and outrun. No, that day's over. Huh? And they realize they have messed up. I'm so busy looking at the OJs and the white folks jump out. Oh, OJ, OJ, look back there. Have you ever been going through airport when OJ come through? You miss your white, white folks love him. Juice, you know. And then when they get away, ah, this is a murder. Well, you sure wasn't no murder there, but when I missed my flight, because y'all jammed, you know what I'm saying? Did you see the chase on the highway? Did you see all them white folks on the viaduct saying, go with them signs, huh? Did you ask yourself, how did they know he was coming this way? And where them signs come from? It wasn't one, hundreds. Go, Juice, go. You my man, baby. Huh? When you saw the chase, them cop cars wasn't trying to catch him. And when I asked a friend of mine, I said, man, go down to, 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 to uh, L.A. and check that. He found out they shut that highway down an hour and a half for the chase. Huh? Huh? It's the games they play. Huh? The whole... 
And so when you think about Obama, like woman said, you think they're killing? I said, y'all killed Jesus. And then, and then, and then, add insult to injury to Jesus. They gave him thugs a choice. The Romans. See, the Romans had legions. You don't heard that word, legions. That's them six foot three, blonde, blue eyed, nice looking white boys. See, when the white boy, nice looking, come to kill you, you in trouble because he got something to live for. Ugly dude, you, you don't even worry about that. <laughs> She don't care if he get back home to his old lady or not, and she don't care either. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they said, to say, talk to Jesus. These are Romans. 6,000 miles they came to kill him. We talked to him. We like him. So they said, we're going to give y'all one more chance. The two thieves. Pick the one you want us to spare. And they picked the murderer. Hmm? Huh? You hear me? So these are games. So why wouldn't they kill him? Huh? You should have known we were going to have a black president when you saw four movies that Hollywood made where black men was president. They was telling you something. Huh? And then that TV series, what's that, 24? Yeah. He, he was, uh, and, and, and did they kill him? Secretary of State, better watch Hillary. Hmm? Hmm? And the only thing you can do is when you get there, you just that colored. They can't deal with that. You know? If that would have been me got elected last week, I'd have made all y'all mad. Huh? I wouldn't have put I'd announce there'll be nobody in my cabinet. But Negroes. <laughs> White need not apply. And those that you do apply, you can't be educated, you can't know how to read, you can't know how to write. I want dumb, ignorant niggas. Why? Because if these white boys with all these PhDs and mess this country up, like, let me try something else. So my cousin in St. Louis, he can't read, he can't write. <laughs> Jabbo Jones. You are Secretary of Defense, Chabo. And I can see them white boys on 60 Minutes. You saw Obama on 60 Minutes. Now that you're Secretary, what do you plan on doing about defense? I'm going to fix it, then paint it. <laughs> they say, well, Obama coming president, becoming president. Do that mean y'all have arrived? No. Huh? I hear you. No, you don't have to tell them. No, wait, 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 wait. They got a right to sleep if they want to. <laughs> See, black folks, there's different degrees. And I think about all the black folks. How many of y'all have read the, Win the Willie Lynch letter? Huh? How many of y'all know that Willie Lynch letter is a trick? That's 1960 lingo. White folks didn't talk like that 300 years ago. Well, you black folks, some of you hip on this, some of you hip on that, and all of you confused. Black folks is like a bunch of crabs, what they say, in a pot of hot water. Once one gets to the top, what happened? That's not the black folks, that's the hot water. Make them act like that. Don't blame that on me, nigga. Cool the water down the night. Go out there where crabs hang out. They ain't pulling on one another. But they got you believe that's our blackness and y'all suck enough to fall for it. Huh? It's a game. It's a game. Obama go to New York tonight. He ain't gonna get no cab. Huh? Let me tell you. Here's the president elect. I don't even like that. He's a president. That's white folks stuff. Elect. He's, he's my president. He stand on the corner. We can we can stage this. We can put on the corner. We can go and get us a murdering Jack the Ripper white boy out of jail tonight, and bring him and put him on that same corner. And then cab driver will run over Obama trying to get to that white boy. <laughs> 
And I wonder how much blame can we put on white? I put all of it on. But remember, New York had a black mayor. And it ain't, it ain't easy to make white folks and cab drivers behave. Just that we got some decoy cops out here, you pass by anybody, you never get licensed to drive a cab in New York. That stops overnight. You don't even know. Hmm? And if I was Obama, I would do mine different. I would go to New York, walk on the corners with a sign, I don't want no cab right now. I just want to talk to the cab drivers. And I get CBS, NBC, all the big commercials, I said, I want you to drive for the next two miles and see them tanks on the corner. And I said, uh, don't worry about no white folks assassinate me. Because soon when they, they told me I was the president, I was saying, I want y'all to know one thing. I own the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, and I own all the bunk. I wish somebody would shoot at me. <laughs> I'll wipe out that whole town. Now, what does that mean? That means everybody in Chicago got to be on the lookout because they know I'll kill them. Hmm? And I had no trouble getting a cab. I said, I want you cab drivers to watch these TVs for the next two days and look at them tanks. And I wish one of you would pass by me when them tanks got through. They wouldn't even be able to identify who you was. That ends that, you know. It's a game. But think about what happened. The three most powerful forces in the history of the universe, God, hmm? Jesus, if you're a Christian, if you're not, whoever, and whoever's the president of the United States. It's the most powerful country ever existed in the history of the planet. So the three most powerful powers that ever exist, God, Jesus, and the president of the United States. God, you ain't never seen. Jesus is dead. There's only one left. That's him. Huh? That's what happened the other day. Huh? That's what happened the other day. And when you walk down the street, they, they see the president. I got to just apologize to them redneck nigger hating crackers in Mississippi, them Ku Klux Klan. No, no. They saw something that I didn't see. Why? Because as nasty as they was, they had some Negroes that they loved. This is my nigger. Don't you mess with him, huh? They knew how smart you was. They said one thing, but I'm with you. I see you take nothing and make something out of it. Huh? I see after I put you through all this stuff, Christmas, I walk outside, y'all happy in the tent. And that redneck nigga hating cracker knew something. God, if you let him vote, he'll be president. He knew how smart you were. The president of AT&T and Harvard and Yale, they didn't know. But them boy, that's why they blew up your church. That's why they killed folks. Because they knew if you got the right to vote. Huh? <laughs> they knew that. The game. And the brother, you know, I mean, I don't know, the nigga don't get tired. You ever seen him? He ain't no bags on his eyes. He just get up every morning like he just got out of a box. <laughs> Somewhere. The games. And he, he really didn't. All he had to do was overcome racism because McCain wasn't that. McCain. That, that's the ugliest white boy. I mean, the first time I seen him, I said, now if he's not dead, he's a very sick man. <laughs> and you know how silly white folks are? They say, he's a war hero. You know that. How can you be a hero when you got caught? <laughs> uh, I say, you ain't, you know. Oh, the old John Wayne movies, they'd be a, oh, John Wayne be shot, he'd kill him coming up there. That's a hero. You know what I'm saying? My cousin was a hero. The enemy was throwing stuff up the mountain, he'd pick it up and throw it back. <laughs> the boy got caught with them Koreans, you know? Stayed there five years. 
And they let the American soldiers celebrate Christmas, you know, and stuff like that. Now, you know Koreans eat dog. You know that. Huh, why you at? You didn't know that? Now, you know they eat dog. You grabbing your head and all that kind of stuff. You eat hamburger, you don't know what's in it. All I'm trying to say, if Korean loved dog and he was there five years, you know that white boy needs some dog. Huh? He said if he'd have been president, dogs would be missing around the world. <laughs> I'm a hero. I was in the army three days. <laughs> And a soldier ain't nothing no worse than a soldier. They come back, the government won't take care of them, so they're going to be mad at you. Beat up their old lady, terrorize the neighborhood. You went over there and got crazy in the war. Hmm? And I listen to my little boy, I just hate listening to all them old World War II war stories. Yes, I, uh, I was in Patan. And the Red Cross gave me this little Bible. You see the little Bibles the soldiers walk around with. And I had it in my chest pocket. And I heard something hit me, and that bullet hit me. And it hit my Bible. You heard them say? And if it wasn't for that Bible, that bullet would have gone clean through me. <laughs> I've been in the army. I was in the army through this, so I tell my war story. Well, I never left the country because I can't say Japan. <laughs> See, when I was in the military and I was in this whole house. <laughs> you, you know, you mean, my sister, you hit the hurricanes, right? And tornadoes. You know, two things a hurricane tornado don't mess with a whole house in a bank. <laughs> they tear church down, they tear school down, they tear awful, they tear nuns' homes down. You ever read the paper where the First National Bank disappeared? <laughs> if we had a hurricane or late right now, y'all be running to the church, and I've been in the church all my life. I'm going to the whole house or to the bank. <laughs> hmm? You ever seen in the paper saying the whole other woman say, she said, oh, my panties was just blowing. No, 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 no. I saw money blowing. No, no. Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> Say ho, and you come on up here, don't you, son? I've been yelling and hollering all night. He didn't move. I told you they hit. Didn't I tell you they hit? He, just, he come up here. He didn't see nothing. He went on back. <laughs> you didn't see? Oh, they hit. He just went on. <laughs> So I tell my war stories. I said, I met this machine gunner. You ever see them big, long machine gun bullets? Huh, what'd you say? 50 cal, yeah, man, you know. So my story is, I had four 50 cal bullets in my pocket here. Then I was in Chicago, and the Shriners was having a convention. They was up on the 30th floor of the hill, and mad and fighting and throwing at one another. And, and, and this one boy picked up this Bible and threw it in the guy and ducked, and that Bible hit that window and come 37 floors down and hit me in the chest. Had it not been for that bullet, that Bible would have gone clean through me. They put me out the third day. <laughs> See, I was in right before the Army integrated. That's a hell of a thing, you know. If my father would have been killed by Germany in World War II the day that German can come to my daddy's country and live and work with my daddy's boy, and we tolerate that, huh? With no shame. Hmm? So the third day, this white captain talking to 50,000 of us. All right, if you troopers, if you ever get talked by the enemy, give up nothing but name, rank, and seal number. Y'all understand it? 50,000. Yeah, baby, we understand. And you know how bad it feels? You're the only one out of 50,000 don't understand. I raised my hand. He said, what's wrong with you, trooper? You stupid? I said, I guess I am. 
And we all be talking right when y'all be trying to act all intelligent. They not just talk to them. I ask the captain, did you say if you get captured by enemy, you ain't going to give up nothing but name right and still? That's what I said. Do you know what dog tags are? They have name, rank, and serial number, right? Which means the enemy could get that much information if he was dead, right? I said, no, no, y'all got to give me something to negotiate with. <laughs> Look, man, if I'm fighting you, trying to kill you, and you capture me, and I can't tell you no more, and you get, if I was dead, why you gonna keep me for five years? He said, you talk like a traitor. I said, I might be. But I tell you what, this is my third day in the army. And you write to the Pentagon now and put on my records. If Dick Gregory ever get caught, y'all change all your used to be secrets. That's right. Cause there's something about a guy pulling my fingernails off and sticking pins in my eyeballs and pouring hot water down my back. I tell him where my mama is. And if mama don't understand, she don't understand when that hot water hit her back. And then you got to be cool. Y'all got all stiff and all uptight and all crazy. Be cool. So while I'm waiting for my military papers to come to throw me out the military, they say, well, we have an assignment for you. Me, I thought I was out. See, we've been told by the Pentagon to integrate the chaplains. The church is mean, isn't it? Do you know when Pope John II, the Polish Pope, when he became Pope, 1.5 million white folk quit the Catholic Church? Huh? Sets of hatred. Huh? But you're just as bad you got a gun and a Bible in the same house. Huh? Most of y'all be for capital punishment? How can you be for something that don't apply to nobody but you? How can you cry over the crucifixion of Christ but be for capital punishment? Don't you know Christ was killed by the state? He wasn't mugged to death or run down by some drunken chariot driver. You know, oh, Easter, that's why I don't be around none of y'all on Easter Sunday. Were you there when they crucified? D Lord. That's such a cheap song to sing. 2,000 years later, you wasn't there then, and I'm sure you wouldn't be there now. Where are you then? Do you know if Jesus Christ came back to America today and bugged the wrong people, they give him the lecture chair? Then all us Christians, we walk around with big chairs around our neck. Where are you then? <laughs> How do you make the sign of the chair? Hmm. And you know, if my little trifling cousin came here tonight and went to the Hilton Hotel and killed 12 white folk, you know he's going to get the lecture chair. But if Prince Charles' little drug out son came here and killed 42 white folk, you know he's not going to get the lecture How can you black folk be for something that just pertains to you and poor folks like you? Are you crazy? Huh? You know damn good and well, Rockefeller, you know damn good and well when these big corporations get caught, they pay and don't have to admit they've done nothing wrong. Huh? One day when you white folks realize, you black folks realize, it's not your fault. Way back then, they taught black folks to accept injustice. And once you accept injustice, you become unjust. Huh? So most of you are sitting with a black face, but with a white mind. Talk a bunch of stuff, ball up your fist, and go through all them changes, you know. I live on this big old farm. I do not live in the ghetto. I'll come die for you in the ghetto. I ain't going to hide from it. I don't have no bodyguards. I'm listed in the phone book, but I am not living in the ghetto. I come down. Two weeks ago, I'm in St. Louis. You ain't trying to be a brother. Saw the brothers on the corner. My man, they put them both up, nigga. This is a stick up. <laughs> When you, this is a filthy nation, 
And when you live around filth, you become filthy. That's when you go anywhere in the world and let your children go and kill people for this white thug. But when a cop gun your mama down, the same gun don't come back home. What kind of fool is you? How can anybody respect you? You black men, the baddest things on the planet, as long as you're killing somebody else. Huh? Cop blow your mama away, your daddy away. That 92-year-old black woman, they said they, they killed down in the said she was a drug pusher. Had a black man, a black police chief, and that can happen. Huh? huh? So I hope we'll let this Obama thing just sit down and sell it and change something in here. Huh? Oh, my mother, what a beautiful lady she was. She, she didn't like homosexuals. <laughs> but she knew the choir director and Annie Art Baptist was gay. <laughs> See, niggas pick and choose what gays they like. Hmm? Hmm? She knew the music director at Reverend Gully's church was gay. I'm a five-year-old boy. I didn't know this time about She said, you know, so-and-so's gay. What do you gay mean to five-year-old? Gay, gay 90s. You know, so-and-so's funny. I heard that all my life. Then one day I'm in gym and the teacher said, uh, Gregory, what you want to be when you go up? I said, I want to be gay and funny. When I saw that nigga opening up his belt, you should have seen me get out of there. I didn't know. And I don't have no problem. But my mama didn't know. She reading King James Version of the Bible. It didn't say God's Version, did it? Huh? It didn't say Jesus' Version, did it? Huh? It didn't say Christianity's Version, did it? It said King James Version. She didn't even know King James was King of England. And he was such a strange homosexual, he hated women so bad, he killed his mama. And his lover was Lord Buckingham, who Buckingham Palace is named after. Y'all crazy? How can you have the document and then be against homosexuality? Huh? These are games. And once you get back to wisdom, wisdom, You have to be careful because you wake up in the morning, you don't know where this thing is going. You know? This brother was a friend of my cousin, really hip. He said to his lady, they were smart, me and you won't get mad, but we ain't gonna give these white folks our money. You know, we don't spend no hundred thousand dollars for a wedding. You know what I'm talking about? He said, we're gonna take that and put the down payment for a house. You know what I'm saying? The, the bridal suite in, in Jamaica for the weekend, six thousand dollars. Now we're just gonna tell them we're going to Jamaica, <laughs> and we're not gonna answer the phone. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're going to the justice of the peace and get married, and they did. Now to show you how the universe works. While they there getting married, there's a brother on death row that didn't kill 12 white folks and they escaped from jail. Hmm? He's been in jail 27 years. On death row, case working his way up, you know. And so out of all the places for this brother to end up, huh? out of all the places, he ended up in their house, their new house. He there. See how the universe work? He there. And him and I get to they just so in love. He opened the door and pick her up and carry over the you know the threshold. Ain't too many sisters you can carry over. You can I don't care you over, but ain't too many sisters you can carry. I mean that's how I got my hernia. Come on, baby, jump <laughs> <laughs> so they walk in they just so in love and my man jump out on with that gun I said do not make me kill y'all I've been in jail 27 years I killed 12 white folks 
I ain't had no good food and I ain't had no real sex. I know they're going to catch me, but I'm going to get both of them before I go back. Don't make me kill y'all. So he took the dude and sit him in a chair and tied him down in the chair. Took the sister and put her across the bed and tied her down and looked like he was kissing her in the ear. Then he got up and left. My man scooted that chair all the way over there. <laughs> and he said, dear, I know I love you and you love me. That's not the doubt. We'll be together forever. But you heard what he said. He said he'd been in jail 27 years. He ain't had no good meal and had no good sex. And he don't get both of them before he go back. So when he come back, I just want you just to, you know, just act like you love him. And so she said, what do you mean? What makes you think you love me? He said, I saw him kissing you in the ear. He said, no, he was telling me how pretty he thought you was. <laughs> and asked me where was the Vaseline. No, he'd be back. Don't you feel bad now? <laughs> but all you got to do is just, when y'all leave here, drop all that old craziness. Huh? It ain't got you nowhere. I just went in the white neighborhood four days ago. This the police pull up, so you live here. I said, no, I said, what you doing? I'm just watching my folks getting put out. <laughs> So you have been put out. I lost my house when things was good. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the biggest problem, Grandma, is the stress. Hmm? White folk buying guns. Y'all see that? Washington Post? The last 18 months, gun and ammunition sale have gone up 18%. Hmm? Now, if y'all want to have some fun, go back and look what happened during the riots of the 60s. White folk went out and bought guns. Hmm? Took their wife and their children out to the rifle range and taught them how to shoot. Because they thought I was coming out there. They don't understand because they don't know black folks. I was making a ghetto jailbreak. I wasn't trying to get to no suburb. I'm trying to get out of here. You know, like me and you in jail, we break out of jail. We ain't going to the warden's house, man. We're going to Kansas City and look for her. <laughs> them white folks out there, they showed them on TV at the rifle ring, at the little children. Pow, pow. Look at the homicide rate in the 60s. He taught this lady how to shoot. he been dogging ever since they've been mad. She just go on with it. You know, I'm going on with it because I got to get the children through college. What an what a awful job, waste of God's humanity. So he taught her how to shoot. Didn't niggas come here while we go and blow them away? Then he come home one night and she asked him about that lipstick on her shirt. And he's smacking, she go get that gun and blow him away. Mm -hmm. So when y'all see him buying these guns, just keep your mouth shut. Just. <laughs> you see her going to the rifle range, you just say, And maybe we'll see this country get a, its priorities straight. Hmm? One football team, we can count them all, one football team, University of Texas, has a hundred million dollar budget per year for football. Hmm? You hear me? hundred million dollars per year for football. He loves football. On Super Bowl Sunday, more white women get killed on that day than any other day of the year. Super Bowl Sunday. And on Super Bowl Monday, more white boys take off from work. Well, it won't be true this time, but he ain't got no job now. <laughs> so, the boy is armed. And don't worry about him, you know, racial thing. He's just mad, angry. 300 years of white privilege. He thought that meant something. 
I got white dudes working on my staff, and I tell them, but you got 300 years of white people. Oh, no, not us. It's a light complexion. The black folk got privilege, boy. Huh? Don't tell me, bro. That's why I tell them you can't think for me. Y'all think from 300 years of white privilege. Huh? You saw the dude that got killed, and they said killed the cop here in Maryland, and the cops went in the cell and killed him. Didn't have to even have to look for no escape out. That's 300 years of white privilege. Huh? And they got caught on this election. Hmm? So who we got to thank for Obama? A brother y'all probably never heard of, most of you. Jimmy Lee Jackson. Huh? He was killed by a state trooper in Alabama. When nobody had heard of Selma. Hey Keith, where's Keith? Keith, where are you? What year? What year was that they killed Jimmy? 64? Then voting rights bill was 65. Let me tell you. They was marching from Marion, Alabama, to Selma to protest cops beating up some women when they were just trying to register to vote. That's all. And we got there 30 minutes after they had just they shot up, beat up 30 something, but Jim Lee Jackson died three days later. Now hear this, so you know how the universe works. The Edmund Pettus Bridge, John Lewis, that never would have happened had they not killed Jim Lee Jackson. And when they went down there and ordered, uh, organized that march from Selma to Montgomery, that was over his death. And out of that came a voting rights bill. Huh? And had it not been for that, Obama, so Jimmy Lee's death. Huh? And sometimes you have to die. Sometimes women die giving birth, but the child lives. Huh? Sometimes you have to die to create life. And the second person we thank, then after that we put everybody else in. The second person we thank? George Bush. Huh? See, if you understand the universe, then stop trying to understand white folks. Who would have ever believed that George Bush came from this bush, came from this bush? This one that's in now, this one is his grandfather. Huh? Prescott Bush. Not only did he love Hitler, he helped finance him. Huh? Then he produced this boy that produced this boy, and this one that carried himself in such a way, he made white folks so mad and, and scared, they forgot they wasn't supposed to vote for a brother. <laughs> they went out and said, anything is better than that. <laughs> ah. So thank you, George. <laughs> People be mad at him. The boy's so dumb. Hmm? During September the 11th, all presidents are told, if there's a disaster and you're not at the White House, run, get on Air Force One. You remember they couldn't find him for three hours? He forgot the flight number. Hmm? In that old dumb thing, what's his name? Uh, Palin. They keep talking about a beauty queen. <laughs> yeah, all white folk got bad eyes. Every time a white woman gets killed, they talk about the beautiful. What's that old woman do all the most shows on the murder? What's the name on, on, on the... Who? Nancy Gray. Nancy Gray. Oh, she's talking about the beautiful. I said, have a white boy ever killed an ugly white woman? <laughs> or do they get pretty after they dead? And they talk about she's so pretty and she's so smart. I got, I know a, a girlfriend of a girlfriend and I went to school with her. So she's so dumb when she's in college, she stole a car and kept paying the notes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you two brothers, come up and show you something. Come here. I want y'all to see something.
hold this up good so they can see it in the back. Can you see that? Huh? No, no, just hit me by yourself. Just by yourself. Hold up. I got another one for you. Hold that up so you can see it in the back. See both of them? No, no, no. I told you about them damn emotions. Make sure, let, look, let, let everybody in the room see it now so they can. Let them see it over here. It's the same picture, except that back you're looking at is not outside no more, it's in your head. Them scars, them whips, is not on your back. He won't hit you no more, it's in your head. Huh? Both of them is the same. Huh? Did you ever think when we got the first black president, he wouldn't have a slave name? Huh? Think about that. I ran for president and I went, Gregory, that's a white boy's name. He got a name that ain't a slave name. Huh? They don't know how to deal with him. He ain't got no slave genes. Huh? His mama didn't have no slave genes. So they got something different in that White House. Hmm? You see it, don't you? So now what we got to do is remove this out of our heads. That's all. Thank you. Huh? That's what we got to do. Somewhere. They're going to keep changing the rules. They said, I don't know why he stayed in that church so long. With Jer Jeremiah Wright. And you know, every time something happens, wife will bring a mic to me quick. So see, they know I have wisdom. So they're trying to be asking me questions to try to get inside my head, and I trick them. I was in London two weeks ago, and they said, Mr. Gregory, you, you're so brilliant. What do you have on your, what are you thinking about now that Obama's the president? I said, well, I'm trying to figure out what happened to albinos after high school. He said, what do you mean? Well, every high school got albino, but then they disappear. <laughs> Ain't no albinos in here. I'm on airplanes every day. I've never seen an albino on a plane. I was in the army. There were no albinos in the army. I go all over the world. I see no albinos. Where do they go? You ever thought about that? Where do albinos go after high school? You ain't never heard of a woman say the albino raped me, they'd be easy to catch, wouldn't it? <laughs> so then when they can't handle it, they ask you another question. Well, what's the second thing on your mind? I, I said, I'm, I'm 76 years old, I ain't never seen a baby pigeon. <laughs> Every pigeon, I see full grown, sitting on electric wire. Pigeons been here, where would they sit before they was electric? Yeah, yeah. Somewhere, when you realize who you are, hmm? somewhere, I saw this book, Whew. couldn't believe it, and especially you young folks, realize Can y'all see that? What's that say? Hold on, what's it say? These are all the political assassinations. Huh? From Julius Caesar, huh? To JFK. Hmm? See? Julius Caesar, JFK. And you young folks, if you want to know what a mess we left you, we go back to Julius Caesar, all the way up to now, and five people in here, I knew them personally, tell me about the 21st century. Huh? Huh? All the political assassinations from Julius Caesar forward, 
and five of them I was friends with. Huh? What a mess. We left young folk to clean up. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Mecca Evers, and the two Kennedy boys. Huh? In my lifetime, five. That's not counting the ones they killed that wasn't political assassinations. Huh? Huh? Somewhere when you stop and think, tomorrow? What? 22nd? Huh? November? 1963? JFK? Can y'all see that? Do you have the Oswald? Huh? See it? Say, this is the gun that he killed the cop, Tibbet. Hmm? And this is the rifle they say he shot the president with. Are we really stupid enough to believe that when a white boy get ready to kill the president, he gonna buy the gun mail order from Sears and Roebuck? And when that car turned down Elm Street with a book deposit, huh? That car wasn't supposed to go down Elm Street. They made that decision 30 minutes before he was shot. Huh? How did Lee Harvey Oswald know to get the job on Elm Street six weeks before? Hmm? Now, all y'all can't see this in the back, so I need some, come on, brother. I need somebody y'all trust. <laughs> No, 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 no. I want you to look at his body. I want you to look at his body. See the body shadow? Can y'all see the body shadow? Going behind the body. See it? See it going back behind the body? Now look at the nose shadow, brother. The nose shadow coming forward. There's a universal God force that made the sun. It can't cast a shadow backwards and forward at the same time. Then if you look close at that picture, the neck don't fit the body. And that's Life Magazine that helped them trick that. Huh? And when we found that in our research and cracked it, that's what caused the Kennedy King assassination investigation. Huh? This is what this game is about. Nobody would suspect them thugs. They so busy looking at black folks and together on some old redneck, and now they're talking about the Ku Klux Klan, talking about lit. Listen. Y'all see these little, little circles they use for little lynch rope? There was a time they didn't use a small one. They ain't gonna mess with you. It's a game they're playing. They doing all this stuff so when they get ready, if they have to take him out, they'll convince everybody that a Klansman did it, huh? And nobody will say, wait a minute, 80% of the people are 90 in the Ku Klux Klan is federal agents. Just like all these cats out here selling drugs, you know how many of them are decoy cops? Huh? This is a game. So somewhere, thank you, brother. Somewhere, my boy asked me the other day in, in France, aren't you scared? We're going to kill you. If I thought the God I prayed to every day couldn't protect me against stealth, I'd be the first one to admit I'm praying to the wrong thing and help y'all pull the trigger. <laughs> Fear in God. Huh? There's a lot of water out there in that ocean, but it can't sink your ship till it gets inside. Don't let it in here. Huh? You got some bills coming, Christmas look like it ain't gonna be bad, so what? You know what I mean? You got grandchildren, children, you can't get them done for Christmas, just go and tell them Santa Claus committed suicide. He'd be here in the yeah. <laughs> My poor mother. Oh, I wish she was here. Y'all could see how nice she was. She didn't know where my daddy was. And she worked hard for our like Christmas, six of us, all by herself. And it's something about Christmas when you open up them gifts under the tree. There's a little something that runs. You ain't mad at nobody. 
brothers and sisters, you don't say to your brother, you'll give better than, you know what I mean? Something just happens. Huh? And I think now how my mother worked. Oh, I had little bitty legs. I always talk about her legs was hurting. And then Christmas. And if I opened it up and 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 I saw my brand new shirt with the collar. She got the Woolworth, the five and dime, it costs about uh, um, twenty cents. And now I just bought a, a, a shirt at Newman Marcus on sale the other day for fifteen hundred dollars down from three thousand. But in Christmas, both them shirts look the same. Huh? Until you wash them. <laughs> then the one mama bought me turned black. Buttons disappear. It was about the size of my baby finger. But I'm saying after she did all of that with no white man in the room with a gun on her, on her own, she told me a white man named Santa Claus brought that to me. What kind of fools? Huh? That was my mama. Huh? That's the woman that raised me. She know damn good well ain't no white man coming in no black neighborhood after midnight. She know that white boy too fat to get down the chimney. And when he get there, he don't get no black soot on him. Huh? <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. You got to clean up your mind. Santa Claus and St. Nick. St. Nick was a white boy in Europe. Beautiful. Nicholas. And he believed that all the farmers should take a tenth of their harvest and give it away. And that's why they eventually made him a saint. Santa Claus is a white boy that was a chimney sweeper in London. That's what that story is about. Take the soot out of chimneys. That's why he comes through the chimney. Huh? And they give us all this crap and we take all this stuff and then run it to our children and wonder, huh? Jesus Christ had 12 disciples. They knew where Jesus hung out. Wasn't the white folks. Okay. Except 11 of his disciples weren't only white. They were English. Where are you going to find names like Peter, Paul, Matthew? 11 of them white, except the nigga that killed Jesus, he Arab Jew. <laughs> he Jew. Huh? You laugh if you want. We go along with that crap. Huh? We go along with it. So somewhere, we have to take what has just happened and make it personal. Huh? we have already won. White folk can never, no longer look at a black person no more. And not know that they're looking at the president. Hmm? Hmm? And you don't have to go home and dress up. Hmm? The white boys, they've been clean and all these degree and stone. Condoleezza rice, right? No, no, you can say all. I got a problem with it, but it ain't, I, I just think a woman that black ain't got no business wearing no rouge. Hmm? <laughs> Nothing gonna make her cheeks look red, huh? Like the sun kissed them. My problem I have with her and them. She had more PhDs than the president's whole cabinet. They call her Condi. And she don't see nothing wrong with it. They never called Madeline Albright Maddie. They never called Janet Reno Janet. They got a soda pop blacker than her. They call Dr. Pepper. <laughs> if you go get one tonight, you better ask for it by its full title. You walk in and say, give me a pepper, they give you a chili pepper. <laughs> Somewhere. So y'all, y'all, y'all got to get your spirit together cause some awful mess. Awful mess. You know, you got to just listen. Why did he, why did he stand at church 20 years? So that's what the British press says. Uh, Mr. Gregory, um, what do you think about Obama standing here in my church 20 years? Well, I read about $1,500 worth of newspapers 
every 12 days. And I noticed when the priest got caught ripping off them little boys, I never read where nuns and priests left the Catholic Church. Hmm? Whatever y'all say Jeremiah was doing, he wasn't breaking the law. The priest was breaking the law. And nobody left. So why do the rules change when it's my turn? Hmm? Hillary said, well, I just don't understand why he said, oh, shut up, wench. Hillary, shut up! Your old man got caught with that thing in the White House and embarrassed you and your daughter all over the world. You didn't leave. Huh? So why he got to leave? But I know a lot of y'all ain't gonna say the white folks what need to be said. You don't have to. Just bring a note to work one day and, and, and said, you got scared and you can't talk. Then you don't have to lie to him. You stand around all day. As long as you're doing your work, you're going to pay us. Look at him. And when you get home, talk your ass off. Well, I couldn't wait to get here to tell you what they want. Oh, uh, the game. Hold this for me, brother, please. We're going to get out of here in a minute. Stand up, let me see. This, this, uh, what's, what's the date on that? I want y'all to hear this so you know what y'all walking in. Not to be scared. So you know what's going on. What paper is that? New York Times. New York Times. This is a white boy paper. New York Times. Huh? New York Times. Hmm? Now, what, what section is that? Business. business. Now, when, when, look. Anything in the business section do not pertain to you. <laughs> this is white boy. Hmm? You know, in the old days they used to have colored need not apply. They should have on here colored need not read this face. Huh? What's the date on it? Saturday, November the 15th. Huh? The other day. You ever go to the menu and say daily special? You see that? All right, the front page of the New York Times, what's the headline? Today's special. Today's special, huh? And what's it say? In a down economy. Down economy. Spam sales are up. Spam! White folks is eating spam burgers. <laughs> I brought me a couple of cans in case I bump into some. Come in, nigga. Take this spam, honk in. Enjoy yourself. Huh? Spam. This is the front page of the New York Times. Spam. They working seven days a week. They doing 200,000 cans a day. I called all my white friends that used to have jobs, and I said, now, nah, I know y'all eating spam. I know you're not going to tell me, but the New York Times said y'all eating spam. Hmm? And I don't care. Look, they got spam restaurants. What, what does that say down here? Right there. What does that say? Johnny's Johnny Spam Arama menu. Yeah, they got they got they, this been going on for a long time. Sir, all, day. all day. Come get your spam. Now, what I'm telling them on the radio, I said, now I know y'all gonna want to make some spam arama. Cheese spam dogs. You know? And I'm gonna tell y'all something that black folk ain't gonna tell you. That government cheese, if your if your oven can't hit three thousand degrees Fahrenheit, that don't melt. Hmm? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And you don't need no refrigerator, it don't spoil, and no self respecting rat or flea or dog will come anywhere around it. Hmm? What am I saying? I'm saying there's a mess out here. Forget about when white folks have lived a certain way and they have to reduce down to eating spam. Hmm? If you can't 
eat nothing but spam. You think white folk gonna feed a dog? Hmm? And if you check tomorrow and you find out that them little uh, uh, animal shelters, they're full. The money's gone. See, white folk, when they get ready to, you know, get rid of the dog, they take it to the animal shelter. Like, black folk, my cousin in St. Louis got two pit bulls. He ain't got no job. He put them damn pit bulls in the car and carried them 60 miles away from St. Louis and let them go. Them dogs beat him back home. <laughs> he got back there, they were sitting on the porch. <laughs> and he hoping they don't know because he can't get you his gun. <laughs> I mean, real white folks. See, the white folks y'all been mad at, y'all, them ain't real white folks. Being white in America ain't a color, it's an attitude. And if you ain't got some big bucks in the bank that you don't need, you can't have the attitude. Hmm? So y'all be careful when you drive, not just I mean, black folks too. People got attitudes. You don't know who you yelling at and screaming at. They got a gun, they might be going to commit suicide, they might be going to kill. No, no, this is serious, huh? When you get to the point and you played by the rules, huh? You've done everything. They got 5,099% white MBAs that's out of work. And Wall Street's fixing to fire 70,000 white folks that thought they were safe. Huh? I know they're upset. You can't get no meaner than me. I pass white folks now. I get in the tongue. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> how you feel? I'm damn miserable, boss. I, I just get out. <laughs> Now let me tell y'all something else. These white folks is not going to tolerate having to eat spam <laughs> and brothers and sisters is in jail eating real food. Watch when they make that turn. Did you hear me? This is not a black country. And don't think you put this boy in the White House. Black folks, I'm talking about all of us, all, if you count all black folks, babies, old folks, one just born, one that'll be dead tonight, it's 12%. And don't you ever think 12% gonna determine what 88% gonna do. Okay, so don't walk around with your booty all up high. How about we put, you ain't put nothing in. Huh? But if your attitude is right, White folks will think you had something to do with it. How you doing? You know, white boy says, how you doing? Say. <laughs> and every now and then you got to lie, man. You got to tell them white folks on the job, you're going to Tokyo for the weekend, your lady ski. And just don't answer the phone, nigga. Don't tell them you're in Tokyo, the phone ring, and you answer it. Don't answer it. <laughs> And then get some entrepreneurship going. Don't let nobody embarrass you because you ain't in business. They wouldn't give us the money. Don't act like I'm stupid. Everybody got a business going but me. I couldn't get the money. And when I got the money going, you planted dope on me and made everybody think I was a criminal. Huh? You see, like me and you and how we get together and pool our little money together. And I already told you we can get the money without the money because I'm going to teach you how you don't have to pay it back. <laughs> We just have classes on how you walk into the bank. And stay away from the bank. Now, I got some trifling cousins in St. Louis, went in to rob a bank in St. Louis, and they mugged him. Bank ain't got no money. <laughs> they was waiting on somebody. To get. They, they, they kicked that boy so bad, he called 911. I was here robbing this damn bank, and they hurting me. You know what I'm saying? What paper is this? This is a financial paper. This is a big financial paper here. What paper is that? Financial Times in London. What is London? London Financial Times. What day? Friday, November the 7th, 2008. November 7th. See this woman here? See, see that purse she got? Yeah. Ain't no big one, is it? Yeah. I mean, huge big. No, not huge. 
Okay, what, what, what's that footnote say there? Listen to this, y'all. Victoria Beckhorn totes a Herms. What is it? Herms. You get the word you're listening Herms Birkin handbag. Listen to this now. She got a handbag. What else is it Which can cost up to uh, $129,000. A handbag. I'm telling you about real white folks. Nothing more jumps y'all work around. That's straight white. Wait a minute. Wait, he ain't finished. the leading purveyor of high quality equestrian and leather goods. Yesterday cut its sales growth target, the latest European luxury group to be caught by global consumer. Spending. They don't know if they're gonna be in business past Christmas. That's how bad this thing is. Huh? See, NBC ain't telling y'all the truth. Huh? NBC is not telling you the truth. They don't know where the money is. Huh? Somebody got it. I had a guy call me from Spain the other day and, and want to know well, tickets for the inauguration. He gave me $50,000 a piece. I said, come on and get them. I didn't have none, but I'll have some look like tickets by the time he get here. That's right. And this is a friend of mine. Huh? Thank you, brother. And did you see, did you see where Senator Boxer put legislation through to make it to make it a federal crime to sell a ticket I called her she said I think great they come in here with it Dick Ray, oh Dick how are you Dick I said I just y'all ain't y'all ain't never put a bill through the van lynching it ain't a felony to lynch me a damn ticket White boy called me on the radio, asked me about it the other day. I said, that's for white folks. I got some cousins to be here. They be selling white folks space. <laughs> yeah, well, well, well you, yeah, you turn it down, you can stay there or just get on out of town. You know. It's a game. But that day, that day, you should take off from work. Huh? This happened one time in the history of the planet. Enjoy it. Don't be around some old grumpy folks that don't like what happened. Huh? Enjoy it. Get up early, it's gonna be cold, wrap up, and just go for a walk. Hmm? And thank you. Huh? Thank you and all the folks that look like you that's dead, that didn't live to see it. You got to see it for them. <laughs> You got to see it for them. Huh? This can never happen again. I don't care how many black presidents we get now, we already got one. It ain't nothing new now. That's what we're fixing to go through. Huh? And just enjoy it. And don't let nobody make you mad. Be happy. Huh? If somebody tell Rockefeller he broke, if he get upset, I'm taking my money out of his bank. Huh? Somewhere. What a day. Boy, when I think about how many times they could have killed me. And that universal God just let me live to see this. And live to stand in front of you black folks and see something different on your face. Huh? And what y'all need to do is go home and look in the mirror. Not tonight. Look in the mirror until you see what I see. Hmm? Hmm? Things come over you that you don't even know they're there. Huh? I mean, we was marching one time, and a, a black state trooper who they thought was white, and he loved me as an entertainer, and he came and told me, he said, he said man, uh, tomorrow, the state troopers are going to stay with y'all up to Market Street and they're going to disappear. And there's 300 rednecks from all across the South. They're going to kill y'all. And I called my wife and said, Hey, baby, <laughs> look like I won't be home no more. Huh? 
And every time you get ready to die, you got to tell your lady, your man, you love her. You ain't no jiving. I ain't got no time to be talking about no love. I'm the crack and fix to kill me. You know, and hey, baby, it was a good, you know what I'm saying? Now let me tell you something. I didn't tell the marchers. Hmm? It's worth dying for. Hmm? And when we came out, the black cop that they thought was white couldn't believe you that I didn't tell them. And we marching. And nobody knows what's going to happen. I see Market Street down there. And when we get to Market Street, state troopers going to fade away. And they faded away in them red legs, shotguns, pickaxes, pitchforks, walked across the street. And we kept marching and kept singing. And I'm just waiting for it to happen. I'm the only one in the crowd know that we're fixing to die. Hear me. And then all at once, I saw these white folks, a strange look come over their face. Fear. And they back back and they dropped their guns. And they, they dropped their pickaxes. And they went across the street and they took off. And I was explaining it to an old black sister that night after we completed our march. And she said, son, you don't know what happened? When you're not scared and you're not angry and you understand God, they saw the Spirit of God coming out of you. That they didn't see Negroes. They didn't see niggas. They didn't see what they thought. They saw the real thing. And that next day, when I walked down the street, I saw that. Hmm? I didn't see your home mortgage. I didn't see your, 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 your child was murdered in the drive-by shooting. You didn't show that. And don't show it no more. And those of y'all that got pain and all that, drop it. Do you know more people, I'm not talking about black folk, more people in America died from lung cancer from grief than smoking cigarettes. That's what killed Coretta, grief. Superman, remember when he died? Huh? Remember when he died? And 18 months later, his wife died? And they said, lung cancer, she never smoked. Grief! Hmm? So go home and spend between now and Thanksgiving. This should really be a good Thanksgiving. You live to witness something that nobody in the history of the planet have ever seen. With television where the whole world could see it. Huh? Boy, have you got something to be thankful for. And then think about the Indians. Huh? Or what they're going through. Huh? And when this thing really come down crazy... I'm going up on the Indian Reservation because they never had a thermostat to turn up or turn down. And they survived. And then think about all the people on Thanksgiving Day that you don't like and you know don't like you. And ask them to forgive you in your spirit. And then look in the mirror and you might see the same thing coming out of you and white folks all coming out of us. Huh? That's what it's about. Just be in love with yourself. Don't be validated by nobody. Huh? Queen Elizabeth made $360 million every 24 hours, just interest on her money. And if Queen Elizabeth was sitting here, and my welfare cousin was sitting here, both of them breathe in the same amount of oxygen because she's the richest white woman on the planet. God don't give her no more oxygen than it gives to the poorest person on the planet. And then when you understand that, then you know who you are. Huh? Huh? Think about that. If 10 million people came in this room right now, we don't get no less oxygen. Hmm? And if 10 million people were left out, we don't get no more. Let me tell you why I say oxygen. 
If I didn't feed y'all and kept y'all locked in this room tonight, you wouldn't die. If you didn't have no money tonight, you wouldn't die. If I held my hands on your nose and mouth for 20 minutes, you would die. The most important thing on this planet is oxygen. And my mama never taught me to thank God for oxygen. Thank God for a damn ham hock. <laughs> oxygen. <laughs> and so I say to you tonight, there's some folks outside. They're cooking for y'all. They got books. Let me tell you what's important. What's important. 55% of everybody in America today was not here when King was assassinated. Huh? Huh? 77% of everybody on the planet was not born when King was assassinated. So y'all got to take cards from them folks out there. There's so much history in our blackness. The New York Times is not going to tell you. Huh? They're not going to tell you at all. Somewhere. And so put that smile on your face and keep it there. Go to bed happy. Go to bed knowing that everything's going to be all right. And the last thing I'm going to tell you is remember, 13 is a lucky number. Let me hear y'all say that. And the reason white folks say 13 is an unlucky number because it was the 13th Amendment that freed the slaves. So they make that unlucky, and we fall right in line. Hotel ain't got no 13th floor on it because that's the number of the amendment that freed me. Wrap up good. You walk down the street, you see some homeless folks. I saw a homeless woman the other day, 400 pounds. She said, Mister, can, can you give me something to, give, just something to eat? I gave her $20. I said, please don't buy no food with that. This is wasting my money. <laughs> and I said, if I was you, I wouldn't stand out here weighing 400 pounds. How much you hungry? <laughs> just, I, I'd, rather, I'd rather give you some money. You said you're going to get some crack and say, you know. <laughs> so here's my last thing I'm going to tell you. Stop going by old folks' home wanting to know if they want you to do anything. That's not a true visit. Just go by to see them. Huh? Just go by. That's a hell of a thing. Every time you come by my house, you come in by to see if I want you to do something. No. Can you just sit and talk? Huh? And that's why about 80% of old folks in this country get ripped off by these con men because they lonely. Because you don't talk to them. Huh? And some of them ain't got nothing to talk about. Some of you damn they got to get drunk just to sit with them. They evil and that. Mm. Oh. Mm. Okay. If nothing else, go better when you ain't got nothing else to do. Hmm? So where you going? So I just want some exercise. I want to talk to a fool today. And just sit there. And listen, because when they get past that hurt, they got some stuff back there that you ain't never heard. Hmm? They got some. Now, when that old sister told me there's a lot of water out there in that ocean, but it can't sink your ship till it gets inside, I didn't need no more. So we love you, and, and, and just look at all the stuff they're selling out there. If you don't buy it today, you know this, you know. And put your thought up for Obama. Oh. I love you.